Right, so back again, I got it to work. Uh, it turns out I didn't understand what I was doing. Uh, so I kind of feel like I should have actually drawn a little line over here. So this is a better way of understanding it. Should have done this with a nor gate because that would have made a lot, that would have given the result that I wanted. So I wanted the result was that when you put a high voltage on here, that would set this one, and when you put a high voltage on here, that would set the other one. Um, but having paid it, having thought about it a lot and <laughs> gone through the circuit, I realized that actually it works, doesn't work that way at all. And it says, according to my little guide here, that if you actually had them both high, uh, that would be a, oh no, sorry, if they're both low inputs, so if both of these are low, uh, it's, a dis it's a disallowed state, and you can kind of understand how this works. Um, so if this is low, then this definitely has to have a high output. So it's a NAND gate. If either one of these things' inputs are low, the output is always going to be high. It doesn't matter what the other one is. Uh, so if both of these are low, which is what I had before, because I had them tied to uh, ground, then the output's always going to be high. And so you get both of these being how high, which is what you saw before. And it's only when you press one of the buttons that you get um, a slightly cleverer state. Um, and so what I've done is I switched the way around the logic work. So in this case here, I need to pull it low to get it to shift the, the, the outputs. Uh, so at the moment, uh, instead of having the buttons having a pull down resistor to ground, they now have a pull up resistor to, um, to the high voltage, and when you press the button, they pull the input down. Uh, and so that actually, there's a the wrong way around, but that's okay. Uh, that actually gives you the kind of behavior that I wanted. And I guess I can try and work out why, why, why it actually works. I guess I kind of have to try and pretend this. Let's just say uh, that both the inputs are currently pulled high and that for the sake of argument this one is on and that one is off so if this if, a, if this is a high output uh, and both of these are pulled how's it going to do these both of these are pulled high so the output of this is going to depend on what the output of what the value of the input is so if both of these are high, all that matters, it becomes essentially an inverter. So if you ignore that, uh, the output will be the inverse of whatever this is. So if this is high and this is high, the output will be low. And if this is high and this is low, the output will be high. So I think I've still got my little picture there. So we can probably see that here. If I keep one of the inputs high, the result is the other um, input uh, creates the inverse on the output. So if these are both high, then this input, the output is the, is the inverse of, the, of, the, of this input. So if this is high, the output, um, and in this case here, let's say if this one is high at the moment, then the output of this is going to be low because the output of this is being fed into the input of here. Since they're both high, it's inverting the output. Uh, and so if this input here is low, then this input here is going to be low, and so the output is going to be high. So you get this stable state. So if this starts off being high, that makes that low, that goes low, low makes this high, and you're in a stable state. And if you think about it, if it's the other way around, if this is high, um, then that will go into here, and that will be low, low will go into there, and the output will be high. So you get a stable state. So there's two stable states. Uh, if you pull either of them low, though, that's guaranteed to make that one come on. So that will force the, the state to flip. So if this is on, and it goes into here, the output of this will become low. And so that will go into low. Um, the output on this one will become, uh, hold on. <laughs> All right, so we make this one go high. All right, that will change the output to low. The low one will go into here, and then this one will become on. So uh, I guess that makes sense. No, it doesn't. Uh, I feel like I should have labeled that one. Yeah, it doesn't matter. 
so that becomes high, that goes into there, this is low, and so it doesn't matter what this input is, if that one's low, uh, it will always be high and you continue the you continue the same sort of loop. So I think that makes sense to me. Um, so maybe I've got the labels around the wrong way. But if we use a NOR gate, which is this with an OR with the output, we probably get the behavior that I wanted, which is for it to be held positive, make it switch. So maybe we'll have to do a quick thing on a NOR gate, because that's really what I wanted. But maybe we can use this way as well. Um, so you'll see that if I hold them both the buttons down and I pull them both high, both the LEDs come on. And I don't think it's flickering between two states, it's actually stuck at the one state. But if I let go, it's kind of like a really cheap way of doing... Um, sorry, I did build a little bit of extra stuff to buffer the signal. So I built two inverters with the remaining uh, um, ICs. Uh, actually, in this case here, you probably should do it the other way around. So I'll use it to... So in this case here, one of this one here is being. I'm just. I've just switched it around. So this is to the positive voltage. And now I'm using the output to sync voltage. Uh, and we're going to do the same with that one. And I'll switch it around. So re regarding my previous comment, uh, but I don't want to do that, did I? I was going to do that when I inverted it. But now I'm not inverting it. But now it kind of looks like the way you want it to look. Uh, I haven't really fixed the circuit. It just looks the way you want it to look. Um, but anyway, I think I'll leave it there because I don't have much else to say. That was kind of not what I was expecting. Uh, but that's what you do when you when you are doing a video about a circuit you've never ever actually made. But I made that 40491, so it should be fine. I should know what I'm doing. Uh, but we got it in the end. Uh, and next time we, uh, I'm going to see if I can fix this into the LM324 circuit. If I'm like, oh, it's too confusing, I'll have to do a video on a NOR gate and do exactly the same thing. Um, but of course, um, I was actually just going to swap one over, but and I, and I could swear I had a little packet of NOR gates just sitting here. What's this one? This one these aren't even ICs. Uh, so I've got these bags of ICs. I've got like a huge number of 4011s sitting here. And by huge, I mean about 10 or 20 or something. Um, and no 4001s um, because they have the same outputs so you could probably just yank it out and replace it with a 4001 but I don't know where they are so we will have to wait what's this IC? this IC is an LM324 well, that's exciting isn't it? Um, okay well I can't see one, so we'll do it next time. But I might just be able to swap it over, and it might just work the way I want it to work when I swap the IC over, because they have the same pin layout. But we'll try that next time. So thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe, and all that. And next time we'll do something cooler. Bye.